And as always, in Symfony, you can do that in YAML, but you can also do the same uh, with um, XML or plain PHP. Or anything else, which means that by default, uh, we provide uh, loaders to be able to understand and parse uh, YAML, XML, and PHP files. But you can also store your configuration in the database. For instance. That's also possible. And you can also mix and match, which means that you can um, load some configuration from a file and inherit from a configuration stored in a database or the other way around. So it's very flexible. You can do whatever you want, which can be quite interesting with PHPBB uh, because uh, you have uh, uh, an admin interface where you can change settings. So most of the time, those settings are stored in the database. So we can load them and merge them with uh, the default configuration, which can be stored in uh, a file, for instance. OK, thanks to those environments, we can provide developer tools to help you um, debug problems faster. So we have, of course, a, a logging mechanism uh, where we log what happens uh, behind the scene in the framework. So you can see that by default, uh, you can uh, see the matched route. So and the controller executed for um, this page. Um, you can also see uh, all the SQL statements executed by uh, Symfony because most of the time you use Doctrine or Propel or an RM to, uh, uh, to provide abstraction for uh, the database. And so you don't really write SQL statements by hand. Uh, so the log gives you the real executed uh, SQL statements. Um, so that can be useful if you have a problem, if it does not really behave as you expect. You can also add your own um, message in, um, uh, in the logs, uh, like shown here. And you can also, so by default, we only log uh, the minimal uh, things you need uh, to be able to uh, understand what happens uh, for a given request, but you can also change it to debug mode, and in debug mode, we log a lot of different things, so you can have a better understanding on what's going on. Okay, um, yeah, so in the development environment, let's say that there is a problem, the post does not exist, we have this error page where you can see uh, we have uh, the, the exception uh, message, we have all the logs, the errors, uh, and, okay, it's a bit fast. Um, okay, and the stack trace, and you can also click on any link um, if you have an ID that understand. Mm. Yeah, so, okay, your message, the logs, the SQL statement, and as you can see, there is a stack, stack trace, and you can click on any file, and it will open the file at the right line. So it is uh, debugging a lot, uh, and you can debug really, really fast. And as you can see at the bottom of the, uh, of the page, there is what we call the web debug toolbar, and in the development environment, the web debug toolbar is enabled by default, and it gives you a lot of information about the current page, uh, so the, the version of Symfony and PHP, um, uh, the environment, uh, the value of the debug uh, mode, and a lot of the content type, uh, the, the number of requests uh, to database, uh, the memory, um, the time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and this is clickable. This is not yet clickable, but it will be clickable, and we'll provide a profiler. Uh, which will give um, a lot of different information about the current request. <coughs> okay, so we have many tools like that that truly really is the development process. Um, security, this is really important for us. I know that this is really important for you too, so I wanted to, to talk about security a bit uh, today. Uh, of course, we have um, cross-site scripting um, production by default, so we have an output escaper you can enable in the, in the templating system. Uh, and it works for PHP and Twig, we have a different mechanism, but, so you can enable it by default, and by default, Symfony will escape all the variables 
pass the templates, which means that you are saved by default. And if you need the raw value of a variable, you can um, ask for it. But you need to be explicit if you want uh, the raw uh, unescaped value. We have CSERF production uh, in the form um, uh, component. Uh, so by default, we add a token, a unique token per uh, user and form. So um, that's that's great. We have uh, SQL injection production uh, if you use Doctrine or Propel. And we also have some special things. For instance, in a configuration file, um, you need to provide the password for the database. And that's not always great because if someone can have access to the file uh, and that's possible. Uh, it can easily grab uh, the database username and password, which is not great. So in Symfony 2, what you can do is you can create an environment variable. For instance, in Apache, you can use set env, and you can set Symfony Doctrine Dbull password, and then you can reference this. Uh, you can reference this uh, environment variable directly into your configuration file, which means that the value of the password and the configuration are in two different places. And if you put this um, environment variable configuration in uh, httpd.conf, and it's, if it's not readable by everybody, then it's uh, a better protection than just um, putting the password directly into the the configuration. So we try out to provide uh, a lot of different mechanisms to protect uh, the, the code and to be safe by default, to be secure by default. OK, um, we also like test a lot. So we use PHP unit for uh, unit testing, like PHP BB. And we also provide functional tests. Um, Functional test so allow, allows you to test your uh, application uh, from the request to the response. So you need to write unit tests for your models. Uh, but when you want to test the integration of everything, then you can write functional tests. They are done quite easily in Symfony 2 because you have, um, so we have a web test case, uh, which is an extension of the default PHP unit test case. Uh, so you can create a client, and then the client simulates a browser, which means that then you can make requests and uh, do some assertion on the response. Uh, and this client does not use the HTTP layer, so it simulates the HTTP layer. And the difference between Symfony 1 and Symfony 2 is that in Symfony 2 you can also use an HTTP layer if you want. So that, that's possible. So as you can see, you can use the client to make a request. Here we uh, get the slash hello slash Fabian uh, resource. And then we get back a crawler. A crawler is uh, an object able to uh, crawl the DOM. So it's only available if the request is an HTML one. So if you have an HTML or XML um, response, then you can use that uh, to do pretty interesting things like filtering with a CSS selector, for instance. So here I check that there is the, the, the HTML contains Hello Fabian somewhere. Uh, you can count uh, a CSS selector, for instance, or you can get a response directly from the, uh, from the client and then, for instance, that test that the um, response status code is OK. Uh, this is just some simple examples, but you can do uh, a lot of different things. OK, so when you make a request, uh, the client returns a crawler object. And the great thing is that the crawler also knows everything about the links and the forms in uh, the page, which means that you can select links. You can click on the links. Uh, that way, you can simulate a navigation um, um, in the website. You can also select buttons and then submit forms. Um, and we really simulate uh, the default behavior of a, uh, a browser, which means that uh, we will merge your uh, submitted values with the default ones. And you can also simulate uh, a dialogue between different uh, clients. So you can 
um, for instance, have uh, two different clients, they can make requests and then you can make some assertions to be sure that um, they interact the right way. Um, so Symfony 2 can manage as many um, clients as you want in the same PHP process. Um, uh, and that work if you use um, the default uh, bundles of Symfony, but if you use a third party um, library uh, that has a global state uh, that uses global variable, for instance, it won't work uh, because you can have unwanted uh, side effects and you can insulate the clients in such, in such case, as you can see here, which means that each request will be done in a separate PHP process. Uh, but the context of the previous request is uh, preserved, which means that even if you have crappy code with global uh, state, you can still use uh, the Symfony client to simulate a dialogue between different um, uh, browsers, users. Okay, um, am I too fast? No, clear enough. <coughs> Any question? Yeah. Uh, with the crawler, if you have multiple links with the same content, it just use the first one. Uh, yeah, you can, when you select a link, you can select a link with, uh, like this, uh, so this is just a text. But you can also select a link with uh, a CSS selector, for instance or an X path, that's also possible. And if this is a link, then if you, um, uh, so uh, let's see, uh, yeah, let's say that the filter div h and tree, uh, you added a just after that, then you can call the link method and it will return the first link. Or you can, in the CSS uh, selector, you can say that you want the second one or the last one or whatever. So with CSS selectors and XPath, you can do really whatever you want to select the exact link you want. In case you have, like, uh, like the Greek Lucas example, if you've got two links which have the text Greek Lucas, does it just use the first one? Yeah, by default, in this case, it will use the first one, okay? But there is a select links, and then you can choose which one you want to click on. 